I think with regard to Ukraine, it's important, first of all, to have a bit of a broader context. Uh, there's really a broad three-part strategy that's emerged in the last sort of 45 days or so since uh, the illegal incursion into Crimea. Um, it is, first of all, to support the transitional government in uh, Ukraine, uh, support them uh, politically. Uh, you saw uh, Vice President Biden there in a very prominent form of support uh, just over the last day or so. Support them economically, most prominently, uh, by way of the IMF arrangements, um, and support them as they see their way through this uh, constitutional challenge and electoral challenge and move from the old regime to a new regime. So supporting Ukraine, I think, is the first part of a three-part uh, international strategy. Second part has to do with uh, the reaction towards Russia. And here I think the, the action verbs are condemn, that's been done widely, uh, everything from the NATO-Russia consul inside NATO uh, to the United Nations to actions inside the OSCE, the European Union and uh, a multitude of, uh, of national statements have uh, exposed the Russian actions for what they are and led to condemnation. Uh, then beyond condemnation, though, to impose costs and consequences on the Russian actions. Uh, and ultimately, if this persists and if Russia, uh, Russia continues to isolate primarily politically and economically uh, Russia from the uh, integrated international community. So the second form of this, uh, or second part of this three-part strategy has to do with those actions towards Russia. And then the third, for the alliance anyway, has been to reassure allies, that is the 28 member nations, that NATO uh, means what it says about mutual defense, about collective defense, about the, what we uh, call Article 5, which is that fifth article in the Washington Treaty signed 65 years ago, by the way, that says that an attack on one is an attack on all. 